Meanwhile, Anthony Albanese is grappling with his first major policy back down since the May election. He's agreed to extend COVID pandemic isolation payments to workers that had expired earlier this month. Joining me live is Australian Financial Review's political editor, Phil Curry. It just reminds you, doesn't it, that governing's a bit harder than opposition because mm. there were so many times <laughs> Labor were able to chip away at the government during COVID. Why not do this? Why not do this? They're late to the party. And on this, you know, they realised this was costing money, it wasn't sustainable, so they thought, we'll just continue the other government's decision. Mm. And people said, hang on, what are you doing? What did mm. you make of this back then? Yeah, yeah, well, exactly that. I mean, these are the, these are the sort of pressures, you know, the, that the previous government faced constantly and, 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 you can, and there's no certainty about anything and then just stuff just rears up out of nowhere um, and, take, you know, and your best laid plans go, go to waste and you have to re rethink things and... That was pretty much you know, the story of handling the pandemic by the previous government, and I think Labor's now learning the same. I mean, we're seeing it now, Tom, ripping through nursing homes, and, uh, you know, Labor was sort of full of free advice to the Morrison government on that as well, and now they're grappling with the same problem. So, mm. uh, yeah, it's, it's, easier to, it's easier to sort of criticise from the sidelines. It's a lot harder to manage these things. They've got the states paying for half, mm. which feels significant, because mm. there'll be all sorts of calls for different spending on COVID going mm. forward. If this is the precedent, at least the states will only yeah. approve what they can afford as well and you mm. get to a position where rather than just saying pay for it, because yeah. then, then the states will call for everything, yeah. now there's sort of... Is that a sense that this is the new standard for well, paying? Yeah, well, it should be. This sort of yeah, stuff? Yeah, it should be. And, I mean, well, Morrison tried that too with the states towards the end as well and got criticised for it, yeah. remember, yeah, on both yeah. flood, flood assistance and COVID assistance. You know, that was cruel and evil. So, again, it's just, you know, Labor's being you know, welcome to reality. But, but, you know, as, as Jim Chalmers said about a month or so ago, you know, the states have a much better debt position than the Commonwealth does. They're actually, you know, the Commonwealth is in a world of trouble budget-wise. The states' budget positions are stronger. Mm. Uh, so it's only right that they be asked to do more if this is going to go on. All you can do is hope that, you know, we'll, we'll muddle through to September, summer and spring will come, this crisis will abate um, and, uh, you know, it won't be an issue at least for, you know, six or eight months. But it does, again, bring attention to the budget. Mm. Labor today is highlighting calls in the budget, including how much debt's going to cost mm. us in interest payments alone. Yes. And it does sort of make you think, how interesting or tough could the October budget or maybe the following mm. budget be? Because if you're going to make it, yeah. give the, the, the electorate tough medicine, you do it early on. In you do, but all the indications have been they're not going to do it early on. I mean, that same interview... Uh, Jim Chalmers gave with us, it was basically this budget. He said they're going to cut harder than they thought they'd have to, but he was still talking about waste and things like that rather than structural changes and the, the, the really mean stuff would be coming from next year onwards um, once they've had their job summit and their, um, you know, and, and, and the intergenerational report, which they, I think that'll be the one next year. They'll bring out an intergenerational report in February and that gives you the 40-year forecast of just how bad things could be if they stay on the current trajectory. Right, so, so, so that highlights try and such as... A bit of shock and awe therapy. Yeah, yeah. here's yeah. how the budget will be. Yeah. It won't be sustainable. We'll lose yeah. our credit rating, won't be able to do yeah. this. Yeah. Therefore, we need drastic... Tough action. measures, you know. Here are the options, let's pick this yeah, one. A they... bit like the government's commission of audit way back. Yeah, exactly. And, and they're going to have to do stuff like that. And, uh, um, look, you know, they're, they're still... They're not saying it, but are the, 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 the states really tax cuts really going to go ahead? Um, you know, there's a lot of, lot of money there. Um, all, all those held things. the line on that so far. They have and they still are, but, yeah. but you know, all those things will come back into play. Fuel excise, another interesting test? Any it sense will be. No, here? again, I don't think they've made the decision. I mean, at the moment, the inclination is to, is, you know, three billion bucks every six months, but I suspect their, their discussions have been, well, let's just wait and see what the situation's like in September. And what the um, price is, because it And what the price is, so yeah. If yeah. it's down to two bucks, maybe you can put it back on, but... Mm. They may phase it up, they may phase it out, they may just freeze indexation, but I think that one's in the we'll wait and see basket, but mm. they'd have to be thinking of options. Um, COVID isolation time, mm. interesting push. It feels like Anthony Albanese will change yeah. it, push to change it, just not quite yet, mm. in the midst of another variant in the middle of winter too yeah. and all the issues that come with it. Well, that, that adds to all the, the economic expense and, and the workplace disruption and stuff like that, I mean, five days, seven days. Uh, I don't know if there's a huge difference because for five days is still a working week, but... Um, uh, but you can still get COVID on the on the yeah. you know, Friday or whatever, and people are running around with it everywhere at the moment. Yeah. I think that's sort of it's a bit it's a bit immaterial to be honest. But um, there's such such an honesty system involved now. A lot of yeah. people only test if they know they'll be able to get yeah, yeah. paid, and that's yeah. why the COVID sick yeah. payment comes exactly. into it. Exactly. Yeah. Um, just finally, Parliament back. The big talk at the moment is climate legislation, which is strange in one sense. They don't actually need to pass it. No. So they'll not... go through the <laughs> they'll go through yeah. the the motions, but. 
Look, I suspect they will get a deal with the Greens. The Greens sound very conciliatory, you know. And different, don't they? Yeah, on this? I mean, you know, David Pocock a couple of weeks ago told Alan Band, Adam Band, don't be so silly, you know, it's a floor, not a ceiling, that 43% bank the win, you know, and, and build on it. And I think that's very much the sentiment inside the environment movement as well. And yeah, as we've said, Tom, can you really imagine the Greens saying, this isn't perfect, we're going to cross the floor and sit with Matt Canavan and vote against it? Yeah. I just can't see it happening. So I mean, the whole debate on, they also say, make it so no parliament can ever reduce it. Well, you can't do that. You can't do that. <laughs> like, Tony, that Tony, Tony Abbott. Let's put it in the constitution. Yeah, exactly. Have a referendum. Look, Tony Abbott, I remember when he was... Um, uh, yeah, they tried to Abbott-proof the last climate tax and I remember Abbott saying what a parliament does, a parliament can undo yeah, and that, 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 that remains the case. But yeah. what you need to do, is, which is Albanese's theory, is to win, it, to try and win three terms and once you've won three terms, it makes things impossible to wind back. Things like, Medi you know, that's what Labor learned with Medicare and all the health right. reforms. So. Yeah. All right. Phil Curry, good to talk. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah.